I'll get finalized here. Okay, look, we have an equation, okay? I don't feel badly in giving you one of these because, to be honest with you, you can solve this. I mean, you know already when you have, just look at the left side, forget this for a second. You know how to simplify this. We just did one, two, three, three of those, okay? So you know how to take this and simplify it down to one fraction. So once you get one fraction over here, I'm just going to make something up like x plus 5 over x minus 10 equals negative 2. <clears throat> because there's a negative 2 right here. Once you simplify this down to this and bring down your negative 2, you know how to solve these. Or at least you should. This is a rational equation. Okay. So this is a very reasonable equation. I've only given you one of these. Here we go. The first thing you want to do, students, is you want to... Um, Take this here and get it and to simplify it down to one fraction. Then take this and simplify it down to one fraction. So you have one fraction here over one fraction here that flip the bottom and multiply it times the top like we've been doing for the past three problems. Okay, so here we go. Let's first of all start with my top here. I have x over 1 minus 5x plus 3 over x negative 1. Now I must get a common denominator. So I can subtract these two fractions. Well, if I have a 1 here, then obviously my common denominator is just going to be my other denominator. So I have x negative 1. x negative 1. I'm going to write that twice because I have two fractions. <coughs> and then bring down your negative sign. Now, what do I have extra here that I don't have here? x negative 1. And then bring down your numerator, which is an x. What do I have extra here that I don't have here? Well, nothing. So just bring down your numerator. Now let's continue. Um, x times x negative 1 would be x squared negative x. x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. Now let's go ahead and combine this into one big fraction, okay? So bring over your common denominator. I have x squared negative x. And then look what I have, students. I have a minus sign, which means all of these signs will change. So I have a negative 5x and a negative 3. Alright, so if I combine this, I'm going to end up with x squared, negative 6x, negative 3. So that's my numerator of this fraction, and the denominator is x negative 1. Okay, <coughs> so that has now become a really big fraction bar here. This has now replaced all of this. I combined these two fractions, and I got this. Okay, now let's do the same thing with these two fractions here. So first of all, I have 2x over, hold it, before you find a common denominator factor, I can factor my denominator here. Pull out a 2, it's very important. Okay, now a common denominator for these two denominators, let's look at monomial and monomial, both groups have a 2, so I'm going to put a 2. I have, <clears throat> now we're going to look at binomials, one group of x minus 1, no group over here. So I need one group. So my common denominator is 2x negative 1. Now, I write my common denominator twice because there's two fractions. Bring down my negative sign. Now, what do I have extra here that I don't have here? Nothing, so bring down your numerator. What do I have extra here that I don't have here? Well, x negative 1 and then bring down your numerator. Now, 2x is 2x, but I can simplify this here. x squared negative x, take your x and multiply it through. x times x, x times negative 1. So, bring your common denominator over. And I have 2x. Now I have a minus sign here, so all your signs are going to change. I have a negative, <coughs> negative x squared and a positive x. So when I combine my like terms, 2x plus 1x is 3x. So negative x squared positive 3x becomes my numerator. All right. All over this. So I now have negative x squared positive 3x all over 2x negative 1. Got it? So what I've done now, students, is I've taken these two fractions here, and they're totally gone. They've been replaced with this. So I'm not even worried about the equal sign right now. <clears throat> I'm not even worried about the negative term. I'm worried about simplifying this left side as far as I can. So now I have a fraction over a fraction. So let's bring this fraction down here. And we're going to divide it by 
multiply this fraction right here like this. Okay, so here we go. We're going to flip the fraction. So the bottom will become the top and the top now move to the bottom. All right, so let's see what we have here. Now we're multiplying my x minus 1 would cancel with my x minus 1, leave me with a 2 and a 1 here. Now, <clears throat> you're more than welcome to factor out a negative x here if you want, but it's not going to help at all, okay? Not at all. This cannot be factored, so nothing here <clears throat> is going to cancel with this here, so I'm not worried about that, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and multiply, and here's what I get. I have this entire group here times 2. This entire group here times 2. So that gives me 2x squared negative 12x negative 6. All over 1 times this is negative x squared positive 3x. Wow. So I took these two, simplified them down to one fraction, took these two, simplified them down to one fraction, then took my bottom fraction, flipped it and multiplied it. And this entire left side of the equation right here now equals this. So this entire left side now equals this, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and bring down my equal sign now and bring down my negative 2. Now we should know how to solve this equation. <coughs> We've solved something like this before. It's a rational equation. I taught you guys what to do. You get a common denominator and multiply it by both sides. Well, in this case, there's really no common denominator to find. You only have one denominator. So we're going to multiply both sides. Multiply this side by negative x squared positive 3x over 1. And I'm going to multiply the other side over here by the same thing. Multiply this side here times this, because that's my denominator. So when I multiply this left side times this, this cancels with this. Leave me with 2x squared, negative 12x, negative 6 equals, and now this is really over 1 right here. So I take top times top, negative 2 times negative x squared is positive 2x squared. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6x. And of course, 1 times 1 is 1, so that's all over 1. And anything over 1 is just itself. So I have a quadratic equation. As soon as I see that I have x squared, I realize I have a quadratic equation. <clears throat> so as soon, as you have a, as soon as you realize you have a quadratic equation, you realize you want to get one side equal to 0. So bring this over and make it a negative 2x squared. Bring this negative 6 over and make it a positive 6x. And here's what you're left with. On the right side, you're left with 0. These cancel. Negative 12, positive 6, negative 6x. Negative 6. Dude, students, that's easy. <clears throat> Bring your positive 6 over, or negative 6 over, and make it a positive 6. And now divide both sides by negative 6. These cancel, and you're left with negative 1. 6 divided by negative 6, negative 1. Now, I've taught you and taught you when you're solving radical equations, you must check your answer. So yes, I know the book says that we're correct. There's their answer right there. <clears throat> but let's still make sure in case it was a test or a quiz. So where this x is here, I'm going to put a negative 1. <clears throat> Minus then up top 5 times negative 1, positive 3. And then right here I have a negative 1 here, so negative 1, negative 1, all over 2 times negative 1, all over 2 times negative 1, negative 2 minus negative 1 over 2. Okay, this seems kind of difficult, but I don't think it's that hard, guys. I look. Let's just do a bunch of simplifying, okay? First of all, I have 5 times negative 1. That's negative 5. Got it. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. So I have a negative 1 from right here. 
plus the positive 1, that's negative 1, minus 1, that's negative 2. So my entire numerator just became negative 2. Now let's work on the denominator and see what I get, okay? <clears throat> 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Minus 2, that's negative 4. And then I have a negative sign. And then a negative over a positive makes me have a negative 1 half. Now a negative and a negative is a positive. Negative over a negative is a positive 1 half because 2 over 4 is 1 half. And 1 half plus 1 half is 1. So my entire denominator becomes 1. What's negative 2 over 1? Negative 2. What is the entire right side supposed to equal? Negative 2. It checks, okay? Guys, I hope this problem's been a help to you. <clears throat> if you have any